It's a new year with an old challenge, the coronavirus pandemic. Hi, I'm Shamela Pullen, and for the next hour, I'll be taking you through Jamaica's journey through this worldwide outbreak. The lessons learned, where we are in the fight, and where we need to go. But as with everything else, let's start with the beginning. The virus was traced back to this now closed seafood and meat market, but tests have so far failed to isolate a source. 2020 will go down in the history books as the year the world stood still. Restrictions on movement, death, despair, crippling economies, frustration, panic, wonder, all caused by the coronavirus, a disease which brought the world to its knees. Two years in, and the battle to contain the spread continues. At the conference today, they gave the virus a name, COVID-19, coronavirus disease. It all began in late 2019 in Wuhan, China. By January 2020, cases were being discovered all over the world. In China, life in much of the country has slowed to a halt. A serious pneumonia outbreak in Wuhan, China. A new type of coronavirus. The number of affected countries has tripled. The World Health Organization has just declared that this is a pandemic. Jamaicans watched closely as hospitals in Europe and the United States exploded with sick people. COVID-19 attacked the respiratory system, which resulted in an unprecedented number of patients on ventilators. As cases climbed, the global death toll was also rising. Fast forward to March 2020, the government called an emergency press conference. Jamaica today confirmed its first imported case of coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-2019, here in Kingston. The patient is a Jamaican female who had traveled from the United Kingdom, which, as you know, has, a case, has cases of COVID-19. She arrived in the island on March 4th, presented to the public health system on March 9th and has been in isolation since then. All eyes were on Bull Bay St. Andrew. It's where a woman who the Minister of Health officials described as patient zero stayed while on vacation from the United Kingdom. The community which sits on the border of St. Andrew and St. Thomas was the first area to be locked off from the rest of the country. It is given our legal framework. This now gives the government authority to take certain measures. One measure we are about to take or would have already taken is the quarantine of a community, which is the seven miles, seven and eight miles area of Bull Bay. But frustration was all around. Big propaganda in my spread from the world out from where they Black people are in a taxi. See, we are drawing up. Bus, now nah, stop that up. No taxi. When I beg somebody for buy something, when you go for it, when you go for it, they have to put it on ground. You can imagine all that, you, somebody carry food for you and they have to put it on ground. Days later, on March 19, 2020, a second community was under quarantine. This time, Corn Peace Clarendon, where the country's first COVID-19 related death was reported. It's believed the victim returned to Jamaica from New York days before falling ill. In the blink of an eye, infections started to rise. Schools were ordered closed, churches and some businesses too. The long list of closures extended to the country's borders. The tourism industry was taking a major hit. 
These first few days in March 2020 will forever be etched in the minds of citizens. We knew that it was coming, but we didn't know it would arrive. It would have arrived so fast. And at the time I said that this to me is greater than 9-11. It clearly became a lot more urgent and, and, and concerning because you have a population that is unaccustomed to a virus. You see what is happening elsewhere in the world where people are dying. You know there are going to be casualties. You know that public health is going to be in the spotlight. You know that we are going to be scrutinized and a lot would be expected of us. And of course being the Minister of Health being on the bridge, you know, all of that burden starts at the top. So for me, it was a surreal moment in that it represented to my mind a significant threat, probably the most significant that I've ever encountered as a minister and certainly as a country. What was going through my mind actually was that um, this is the first of many cases to come and what provisions had been made to prevent it from spreading within the country. And no doubt my concern was that um, prior to it being diagnosed, um, how many other persons would have, have contracted COVID-19. So I thought then that we were in for a rough ride. Panic across all 14 parishes ensued. Let me tell you what the problem is. The line, there's a lack of line here. No line. Jamaican people don't want to farm a line. They don't know what a line is. That's the problem, right? So while people bumping up at the door, what he has caused, he has caused a breakdown in the social distancing. If he did not announce it, he would or give us such a short notice. Less people would have been out here, less people would have humbled. But we can't, we can't do it any better now. The start of the pandemic, I remember Jamaica didn't really start feeling the impact until March 2020. So we saw what was happening in the rest of the world. And you saw the, if you remember all the, the scenes on television with people rushing supermarket. I mean, the toilet paper was like gold, you know, in Australia, USA, and um, USA. And I think we came out very early. I mean, I said to the Jamaican public, please do not panic. I mean, we, we can supply, especially the food supply. We were in a position to supply. I mean, we're on the television, we're in the media. And I think that helped to calm things down. So in Jamaica, while there was, you know, some amount of, of stocking up pantry, we'll call pantry loading, people did not panic here the way we saw in other countries. Then there were questions about the government's readiness. On January 22nd of 2020, when um, it was not known as the coronavirus then, um, or COVID-19, we raised questions um, by a news release on the 22nd of January to indicate to the country or to ask the minister what preparations government was the country was taking in, in, in the inevitable arrival of COVID-19 in Jamaica. It was known as the China virus. Um, but when it arrived, our first case in March 20, on March 10, when it was announced um, from the lady who came from England, um, the, the concern was, um, was were we properly prepared for it. The security forces were also on standby. We were well prepared. We started looking at our policies. How is it that we were going to treat our, with our members? A lot of them were overseas at the time. What mechanism were we putting in place for them when they returned to, uh, to the island? If we have a COVID-19 situation at a particular station or location, how do we treat with that? So all those things were part of our planning. Also, because we have a large prison population, that was a big um, logistic issue for us. So we had part of our plan is that we had to downsize some, some of our lockups. We started by sending out people who could be released. Jamaica had officially entered the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic.